I mean, I think they need to stop being stupid. Like, just give Jonathan Taylor the ball. I mean, come on. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Monkey Knife Fight, the Monday Night Football Show. I'm Dan Watkins. Joining us, as he does every Monday during the NFL season, is Joe Dolan of Fantasy Points. And Joe, we're just over a quarter of the way through football season. Any big takeaways you have from week five right now? Uh, You know, nothing really huge. Just um, we're really starting to see, like, who the real contenders are. And, I mean, I think in the AFC, are we seeing a little bit of a changing of the guard? I mean – Look, not far be it for me to I'm not counting out the Kansas City Chiefs, but I'm wondering, just based on what we've seen so far, are the Chargers and the Bills more dangerous than Kansas City? I mean, it's uh, I think those teams are more complete. Kansas City's defense really struggled, uh, has really struggled. You know, I mean, even even uh, uh, in week four against a young Philadelphia team. You know, they couldn't get a stop on Philadelphia. It was penalties that really stopped Philadelphia in that game. And then last night, I mean, Buffalo up and down the field and Josh Allen just making great throws. And, you know, we know Josh Allen can be great, but I just feel like the Kansas City defense is a massive problem right now. And quite frankly, I know it's like almost blasphemous to say this. I don't know that Patrick Mahomes is playing well enough to make up for it. And I don't know who could play well enough to make up for that defense right now. Well, that defense is really bad. But also, did that game end yet? Because I, I don't even. Know oh yeah. Oh. I don't even know what time it resumed. It's, it could still be going on. I was like, when I knew we had to get up earlier, uh, um, I try to sleep in a little bit on Mondays, especially. You know, after a long Sunday, I'm on the radio for six hours, and I have a live stream and answering questions. And when I saw that rain delay, I was like. You got to be effing kidding me. (laughs) Like, I knew, like, but I knew I had to watch the game. I mean, this wasn't like the Sunday night football games rarely have a dud matchup. And I knew this one wasn't one of them. So I knew I needed to stay up and watch the game. And because I'd be talking about it. But I mean, I, the funniest part is I just don't ever think once Buffalo really took that lead. um, Here, here, let's, let's put it this way when Dawson Knox had that long touchdown. Daniel Sorensen's still chasing somebody. I don't know where, where, but he's chasing somebody. Once he scored that touchdown, it just didn't feel like it was ever in danger for Buffalo. No, just not- like like like, and I can't remember the last time I felt that way about a Kansas City, and and well, I guess the Super Bowl really, but I mean that now now the Super Bowl this game like. I just didn't feel like Kansas City had a chance in the second half, and that that's a weird feeling to have. But they they got a lot they need to clean up and. Frankly, Mahomes needs to play better if they're if this is what the defense is going to be, and that might be unfair. Yeah, but that's the standard he set for himself, and he's got a half a million, half a billion dollar contract. So yep. that's what happens when you sign a guy to a half a billion dollar contract. I mean, you're going to have to skimp on the edges somewhere, and right now it's not working for Kansas City. They got some time to clean it up, though. No, absolutely. But I was really enjoying uh, last night watching uh, as they were trying to kill time during the lightning delay, going from the studio with Tariko and Drew Brees, who looks great with the full head of hair, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. He looks fantastic. Uh, yeah, I better. I got to get his uh, his doctor. Whatever. Yeah, whatever he's got. going. And uh, yeah, but going from the guys in the studio, then having Alan Chris try to kill time and then she yeah. send it down to Michelle Tafoya, who's talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and how the bills like it to be 70 percent peanut butter and only 30 percent jelly, which I think is a great that's a good, good num- percentage right there, too, by the way. Uh, but yeah, no, great, great stuff. Week five. And we have a great matchup here. Monday Night Football Ravens Colts. The Ravens already on Monday Night Football for a second time this year. Uh, and we're just in week five, which I think is kind of weird how the schedule makers did that. But in this quarterback matchup, we do have a special little gift for you guys. Uh, we have a promo for Lamar Jackson this week. So basically how this is going to work, if you play between two and four o'clock this afternoon, Lamar Jackson's passing total is only going to be one and a half yards. So basically, he's just got to complete a two-yard pass, and then all you guys have to do is figure out what Carson Wentz is going to do and get his total right, and you have a 50-50 shot right there uh, at getting 3.6 times your buy-in for more or less um, in our featured matchup today. So let's talk about Lamar Jackson, who his total right now is 223.5. So if you play after 4 o'clock, this is what his total is going to be. Don't do that. (laughs) Joe, he's gone over that number in every game so far passing. The Colts, their uh, pass defense, they're pretty banged up in the secondary. 
but they're only allowing about 217 yards a game. And then last year against the Colts, Lamar, very efficient, 19 to 23 passing, but just 170 yards. He ran for about 58 in that matchup. Uh, how do you feel about Lamar throwing the ball tonight? I think Lamar's throwing the ball pretty well this year, quite frankly. Um, I think they're, they're using the passing game a lot more than they have in past in the past. And I think that's out of necessity. I think we knew this was going to have to happen once JK Dobbins. And then I think the key one was Gus Edwards going down, you know, JK Dobbins goes down. You're like, this is terrible because we like to rotate our backs in. However, we have Gus Edwards, you know, knows the offense. When he goes down, I think that was the one that really dictated what they needed to do. And they're not dropping Lamar Jackson back 70 times a game. It's not happening that way. But he's dropping back more consistently, more frequently, and he's making throws. And I think they have a trust level now with Hollywood Brown, Rashad Bateman. I don't know if he's going to play tonight, but he's on his way back. You have Mark Andrews. You know, I think Lamar Jackson has thrown the ball well this year compared Compared to years past, I'm taking the more on this. Now, I would still recommend that players play between 2 and 4 p.m. Eastern, but I'm, I'm taking the more on the 223 and a half. All right. Yeah, I agree with you there. He's gone up every single game this year so far. He's gone from 235 in week one all the way up to 316 yards last week against Denver. Uh, how do you feel about Lamar rushing? His, his total running the ball is 61 and a half. And we know the Ravens, they, they have this thing where they're obsessed with uh, getting over 100 yards combined total. And then his backfield, I, who knows? It's basically musical chairs back there, whether it's Latavius Murray, Tyson Williams, whoever's going to run the ball. But yeah. besides, besides Lamar, uh, 61.5 is his number on that one. How do you feel about him running the ball? So tonight? this almost depends, in my view, on how do you view this game is going to go? Um, how do you view this game playing out? Because let's look at Lamar Jackson's rushing totals on the year so far. In week one, they lost to the, Ra uh, to the Raiders. Lamar Jackson, 86 rushing yards. Week two, they beat the Chiefs, one score game, 36-35. Lamar Jackson, 107 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Week three, close game against the Lions. Not Lamar's fault, but Hollywood Brown dropped three perfect passes. Lamar Jackson, 58 rushing yards. And then in week four, they beat Denver by two touchdowns plus, 23 to seven, two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Uh, almost kind of a runaway. Teddy Bridgewater's out of that game with a concussion. Lamar Jackson has just 28 rushing yards. So I feel like almost in a way, if they're in a competitive game, Lamar Jackson's legs are more important to them. If they're not in a very competitive game, we'll drop them back. We'll try to protect him. We'll throw the football a little bit more, and he's not going to take off and run as much. What What do you think this game is going to be? That's a question I have, and you know, I think it's a, I think it's a, a an interesting question. The Ravens are at home. I think they're a far better team than the Indianapolis Colts. I have a tough time taking the less on a Lamar Jackson rushing prop, but he's done it in the last two games. I think they're going to win this game. I don't know about easily, but I think they're going to win it handily I might have to take the less here yeah and I think I saw that the Ravens are like 24 and one in their last 25 primetime games at home so something to keep an eye on there too uh then you got Carson Wentz on the other side 22 or 225 and a half passing yards of his total he's gone over that in three of four four games so far this season had that one kind of dud against the Titans where he only finished with 194 but this Baltimore defense has shown that they they can get carved up through the air uh, a little bit there. Uh, they're giving up about 273 yards a game. Carr and Mahomes both lit them up, so that kind of dragged that number up. And then Jared Goff and the combination of the Denver quarterbacks, not so much last week. Uh, how do you feel about Carson Wentz tonight? I think I'm going to take the more here. Um, with Wentz, the one thing that he's done is he's kind of playing played clean football. And I think that's one of the things people were worried about when he got traded to the Colts. You know, he's lost one fumble and he's thrown one interception in four games. And that is not what people were like, oh, you know, Wentz, he's going to turn the ball over the way he was playing. But he's also kind of become a game manager. And being a game manager is not what made Carson Wentz special in the first place when he had those flashes of utter greatness when he was in Philadelphia. And I think it's almost kind of an unnatural kind of thing for Wentz. And I don't know how, I don't know how far a team goes with Carson Wentz playing like this because 
I don't think game manager is in his DNA. But as you said, the you know the Ravens have injuries in the secondary. I think the Ravens are going to be able to score in this game. I'm going to take Wentz with the more on on the two twenty five and a half. Um, just barely, but I am going to take the more. He's gone up and over this total. Not by a lot has he gone up and over this total, but he's done it in three times in four games. So I'm going to take the more with Carson Wentz. Um, his level of play has been fine, and. I don't know if you trade a first and a third for fine, but he's been fine. And I, I think that's going to continue here for Carson Wentz against the Baltimore Ravens. No, I, I agree with you. I'd go more here too. Wentz's biggest problem this season has been he's the only guy I can ever think of that uh, sprained both ankles at the same time. I just Yeah, don't... and he's not, you know, his athleticism is also key to him. I, I mean, it's just, I, I mean, I think, He's been fine. I mean, the, like, what what else can you say? Like, you know, Wentz was such a lightning rod for years, you know, because because of the play, and then both sides kind of ended up being right about him. And then this year, it's like, do people even argue about him? It's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah there, he's just he there he is. You know, <laughs> like it. He has been fine, and I I think if you're the Eagles, you're you're no pun intended, fine trading fine away. If you're the Colts, I don't know if you're okay with getting fine back. But right now, I mean, I don't think Colts fans would say Wentz is a problem, but he ain't the solution right now either. All right. Let's talk about a couple of the skill guys here tonight. Jonathan Taylor, 64 and a half rushing yards is his total. Finally gets going last week, yeah. finishing with 103 yards uh, against the Miami Dolphins last week for the Colts after just kind of floating around the low 60s to upper 50s the past three weeks before that. But what do you expect out of Jonathan Taylor tonight? If you expect Wentz to be fine, do we, can we expect Taylor to have a, have a good role? I mean, I think they need to stop being stupid. Like, just give Jonathan Taylor the ball. I mean, come on. I, like, I just stop being stupid. He's just, uh, I, I will I want to say more here. I think I think it is going to be more. Uh, you know what? Go less because I don't I don't trust that they know how to use them. They're working Marlon Mack in. I I mean, come on. Like, they, oh, Marlon Mack wants a trade. Oh, let's put him on the field to average two and a half yards of carry. I Showcase. <laughs> I, don't, I don't trust the way they're using him at all. All right. And then on the uh, the Colts passing game, Michael Pittman, 55 and a half receiving yards is his total. He's gone over that in three of four, just barely last week, finishing with 59. But he has popped off with a season high of uh, 123 yards against the Rams back in week two. Uh, how do you like Pittman tonight? If you're going more on Wentz, Kind of got to play one of his receivers, right? Yeah. Um, I wonder if this is the week, though. The rate the the Ravens are giving up production through the air to running backs. Maybe Naeem Hines gets going. I'm going to go with less on Michael Pittman. Um, again, I don't have a huge level of trust in Wentz in this game. And even though I think they're going to be playing from behind, ergo, I think he's going to be throwing it. I wonder if if the guys benefiting from that are going to be Taylor and Naeem Hines and Zach Pascal and Mo Alley Cox, who's a guy they should use more rather than Michael Pittman. Um, Michael Pittman's a guy I have on a lot of fantasy teams, and I don't think I've started him once. It's just been like, oh, there's always been some guy I've trusted more than I've trusted Michael Pittman. And uh, most of the time that's worked out. I'm going to go with less on Pittman. All right. And then on the other side, you got Marquise Hollywood Brown, who you mentioned a little bit. They kind of got something going there between him and Jackson. Yeah. Uh, his more or less number, 62 and a half receiving yards finished. He's gone over that in three or four games. He's popped off for over 100 before he had finished with 91 last week. He's been right over 50 in each of these four games so far this season. So I feel like he's going to be close to that number. But can he get over it? Uh, yes. Uh, and the only time he hasn't done it is when he had those three brutal drops against the Detroit Lions. He catches one of those three brutal drops. He goes up and over this total, and he has a touchdown in all four games this year. More, 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 more for Marquise Brown. And I think he might even be a guy, too, that uh, if you're going to do a touchdown dance tonight, might be a guy you want to throw in there. The Colts have given up eight touchdowns to wide receivers so mm -hmm. far this season, which is tied for the most in the uh, National Football League. And as we mentioned before, too, Indy is a little banged up in that secondary. And then you got Mark Andrews, the big tight end, 
54 and a half receiving yards is his total. The Colts held him in check last year, just three catches, 22 yards when they met last year in 2020. But for Andrews, he has gone over that number in three of four games. He was a little slow in week one on Monday night football. Any concern there for Andrews or do you like uh, him? Uh, uh, he's killing me because I love Mark Andrews this year. I need to get him in the end zone here. Here's the problem. Lamar Jackson has thrown one touchdown pass in every game this year. And Hollywood Brown's been his guy. You know, the only got the only time uh, Lamar Jackson uh, was going to have more than one touchdown pass was that Detroit game in week number three when he threw basically three perfect ones that Hollywood Brown should have had for touchdowns. The guy who did catch one was Devin Duvernay. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Mark Andrews hasn't gotten in the end, end zone yet. I don't know if he gets in the box in this game, but I think he goes more on this total. I like the Ravens passing game actually in this one quite a bit. All right. And then is there anybody else skill position wise you like in this matchup? I know the Ravens have just been absolutely slaughtered by tight ends so far this this season. They've given up 30 catches to tight ends, which is the most in the NFL. A lot of that was from Darren Waller in week one on Monday night football. I know. Yeah. But could do you, do you trust Jack Doyle or Mo Alley Cox tonight? Trust? No, but there was a <laughs> quote. Mo Ali Cox had last week. He said after the game, after he scored two touchdowns, by the way, a season high snap share for Mo Ali Cox. He said, I tell Carson, put it near me and I'm going to catch it. And what does he do? He scores two touchdowns. That seems like a player for a struggling team that should be getting more snaps. So I like Mo Ali Cox tonight. I would agree with you. Absolutely. I would agree with you. And then what about any of those Ravens running backs? Do you trust Murray or Williams or whoever they are handing the ball off to? So they made Tyson Williams. I mean, there's no way I trust Tyson Williams. I mean, they made him a healthy scratch last week. I don't know what the heck they're going to do. Uh, J- uh, John Harbaugh comes out and says, you know, this is the, the Tyson. Uh, it was just the way it went. There's something that he does he, they don't like. I'd probably try to stay away from the Ravens' backfield. If there's, if I was going to take a more on anybody, it would be Latavius Murray. But I don't know what his number is. Uh, I, I think I'm, I'm focusing on the passing game here for MKF. All right. And then last question I got for you, Joe, what's the longest field goal we get from Justin Tucker tonight? In warmups, there's a lot of videos of him. And this is probably a lot of yeah, kickers. By the, the longest way. one we get tonight. Let's go 49 yards. 49. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that's, that's because I don't think these, they're going to attempt anything. Longer, right. But, in, yeah. in the warmups. I, and this is a dumb statement because like, a, it's the same as like guys who do warmups for like three yeah. point shooting in the NBA. They're never going to miss. Um, he was clearing 70 yard field goals, like pretty easily. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I'd love to see a situation where it's like, I don't know, a blowout and they put him out there for a 70 yarder on like Monday night football. See if he hits it. All right. All right, well, I think that's going to do it for us on our Monday Night Football show. Thanks for watching, everybody. Joe, where can they follow you? At FG underscore Dolan. That's fun guy underscore Dolan. All right, and you can follow me at Dan Watkins Radio. Good luck tonight, guys, and uh, make sure you play between two and four. And uh, Lamar Jackson gets two passing yards, so good luck. (laughs) 